how would you rate that victory, Kevin, amongst your wins over your career? Well, exciting. Um, obviously, uh, probably the shortest uh, coaching stint probably since Essendon. Obviously, um, I think I won one of my first six games there. And I took seven games to win it here. So they're hard to win games, but um, very, very exciting with a, a whole of a new group of players all of a sudden and been trained together for about three and three months or so. And you know, I think that um, these guys have really worked hard for that win. There's no doubt about that. Well, it, it does because I mean, all of a sudden, this training through the AIS they've gone through, um, you know, from a point of view of uh, the performances, the travel, the hard training they've done through the AIS and the academies and that, it's been um, you know, a slog. There's no doubt about that. Uh, on top of their exams and all those sort of things, and to get out there and, and eventually get selected, drafted, put it out there in the paddock for about, you know, two months and. Uh, and it was great to get a win up eventually, you know. And the big fella here, he's uh, he's taken a bit longer to get drafted and played. So he's um, how long? Would, what year did you get drafted? Two thousand eight. Oh five. Oh five. So this guy's had the way from two thousand and five drafted to two thousand and twelve. So there's a fair bit of build up of passion, um, particularly for guys like himself and uh, obviously the younger guys. Chief, can you just tell us your thoughts heading into that final term? Obviously four points down. Are you confident? I'm always confident with this group because, um, to be honest, I've always been trying to get them to win quarters after quarter, contest, you know, we, we build it down to win a couple of quarters or bring it down within a goal or 12 points. They've been doing that over the last couple of um, weeks. Our performances have been getting better. And obviously, I mean, let's face it, uh, the team that we played today have only played 22 more games than us. So it was a fair opportunity for us in fairness to, um, you know, the, the, uh, the Gold Coast Suns. Uh, and I suppose in the end, um, some of our experienced players are probably a little bit more experienced at, at the end, at the moment, because we did pick some experienced players. They went for a younger group of players um, when they signed up there, boys. Um, but in the essence of our, our victory, um, you know, we uh, were happy that we, just about everybody played their part, you know, and I, I was really happy because of that. Chief, did you get the feeling that you, your boys wanted it more than the Suns today? Oh, look, I, well, we got off to a good start. Then uh, you couldn't complain that the Suns didn't really want the second quarter. They smashed us off the ballpark for that half an hour. Uh, to me, it was all in the question in the third quarter where we were going to find out how good we were going to be after um, not kicking hardly a score against Carlton last week in the last quarter. You know, we're talking about our freshness of, uh, of the team. Uh, we did make about five or six changes, so that's a hell of a lot of changes from week to week and still get some sort of um, cohesion. Uh, but we've been doing that and it's been working for us. And, um, you know, when a guy like, uh, you know, McDonald says, look, you know, who played very well for us last week, says, look, I think it's an opportunity to play a young guy. Uh, he's a very, very talented young uh, leader, you know, James McDonald. And um, so we put another kid in this week and uh, we got up and win, uh, to win a game. So, yeah, for me, um, there's a long way to go for us. And a lot of questions to still answer for us. We're still searching for our team. Reassure you that because the Giants have gone about it in a different way for the Suns, recruiting and other things, hmm. that you're on the right track and that you, that you are doing it better than them? Well, I don't know whether we're doing it any better. I mean, sometimes, I mean, they've had to travel. If this game was at their home ground, they might have beaten us. I mean, sometimes that does happen. Uh, I don't know whether we're doing it any better. Um, but in the end, at the moment, we've got off the bottom. And, um, you know, and we've been there for a while, okay? Uh, and uh, but in full merit to the players, I mean, you know, they're, they're, everything we've asked them to do, um, stoppage training, you know, zoning, goal kicking, um, that's our highest score. We hadn't had it inside 50 as much as what we had today, which is the first time we've got it in to reward the forwards. And I've often said, you know, Vizzy Folau and some of our forwards were playing in other teams, they'd probably kick a bigger score. But at the moment, they've had a young midfield team ahead of them, just learning the caper. So there's a lot of different, you know, areas of the game we've still got to get better in. Yeah, it was obviously our first win and the first win for the club. So, was, you know, it's after the game, everyone's ecstatic and it was just sort of a surreal feeling in the change rooms. And, um, you know, everyone's just stoked that they we got a win. And, uh, you know, like Sheed said, we're off the bottom of the ladder. So, but it was just a great feeling after the game when Siren went and we could all sort of, you know, enjoy the win. 
Uh, I was searching for the words. I <laughs> need a bit of help, but on the wall over there. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think a few of the boys been. Uh, they might have practiced, um, but uh, um, no, they. When the seconds won, they thought we better get into this because they uh, they knew everything the, the reserves team and um, uh, they were on the ball, weren't they? Yeah, yeah uh, I was so just that... following the other boys. <laughs> did, did it feel a bit like a grand final when, when you sort of won? I mean, obviously not quite the same feel, but, but in terms of the contest. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's been a huge build-up for the club coming to the AFL and uh, you know having six losses in a row and coming to this game against Gold Coast who hadn't won, so it was sort of you know a big game for us and um, you know we knew we were you know we we're a chance of winning today if we played our best game we could you know um, have a good chance of winning. So everyone was just yeah just pretty happy about the win. So I don't know if it's a grand final, but it's just a it's just a really good win for the club and everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm just. Happy to kick a few goals in there for them, but um, no, it's just yeah, everyone's just super pumped that we got the win, and um, yeah, we're we're one and six now, are we? Something like that. They yeah. dad's up to seven, didn't they? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you persevered for a lot of years, I mean, it must be a bit rewarding for you. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> being at Port Adelaide for you know four years, and then um, getting delisted, and sort of going through all that sort of stuff, and. Um, you know, it's a bit of a journey, but um, I probably wouldn't have it any other way, to be honest. If you, you know, I wouldn't want to change a thing. Like being here at the Giants, I, you know, I love being here, and um, this win today with all the other boys, um, it's it's a great feeling, and it's, a, it's I've, I've loved every challenge that I've come across. What about Saul stepping in as a sub in his first game? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, he was good. Um, uh, you know, he came in fresh after half time. He did really well. So, big source said to him after, you know, you just how about you just coming in debuting and get a win one from one. So, you know, <laughs> don't take it for granted. <laughs> Sheed, what does this mean to Canberra? Like, you can just hear the fans chanting, you know, Giants in that last quarter. There, what does it mean yeah. to the people of Canberra? Oh, look, I think that um, genuinely we're trying to say to uh, the city that uh, we want to. We've got to. Obviously, we're going to be here forever. So that's as simple as that. And the first part of that step is a 10-year contract. Um, we want to really um, get the, the, the city of Canberra to understand about the Giants journey and uh, the opportunities that we can work in with a lot of the schools and clubs and, and in general society down here. Um, we can be in and out at times. You know, I've been already down and spoken to quite a number of the school principals and so forth in and around New South Wales, the River Inn. So, so to me, it's about building that trust and belief and the, uh, and the honest commitment to the area. And I, look, I've only been to two other clubs. Uh, Richmond, I was there for about 13 or 14 years and Essendon for, for 27. So I'm a pretty serious person about getting things done correctly. And um, by the time we have the centenary year next year of Canberra, which will be a magnificent celebration, the Giants will be in our second year. We hope, hopefully we'll have some great games here and hopefully we perform well and um, we'll bring great players down like uh, Gary Ablett coming in to play against us. I'd love to see Hawthorne play here, those sort of players with Franklin and Rioli. So we're here to actually attract a great um, attendance for AFL and the learning and understanding about AFL. It, it is um, integrated into our society. It's there for a lot of people around Canberra. There's a million people um, and I think that um, there's plenty there. The ground will probably hold 25,000 eventually when it's finished and uh, sorted out, directed, sorry, but in the end um, it's about that connection, the connection of uh, young kids believing that they can make it. Now we've already made, two of our players are basically uh, from here, our captain is from here, and Josh Bruce, and of course, uh, you know, every time we, we play a player from Canberra or any of the kids in the country area, we will leave a, uh, a, a giant Guernsey in that school for you to remember and to inspire the young kids that that actually um, come out of the schools that actually become a, an AFL player. Whether they end up playing for the Giants and then become a superstar like James Hurd or, you know, those sort of players or Jezelenko, uh, so be it. But the and most important thing is we've got to get that done. Right, Sheets, how much uh, personal satisfaction is it for you? You know, given, say, two or three years ago, you were pretty heavily involved in, you know, getting that partnership together with, you know, with the ACT government, with, uh, you know, ACT AFL. How much, like, how much satisfaction did you take walking off the ground today? Oh, look, I think along with many other people in the AFL. Yeah, look, you know, we understand that we sit down and we actually commit ourselves to uh, contracts and agreements and, um, and and that's the great thing about this country. You know, we've, got, we've just did, signed up a great day coming up against Colling in Round 19, uh, Building the Nation Day. Uh, we had the Prime Minister's Cup, you know, last game we played here. We've got a, lot of, a long way to go to connect AFL still with different parts of Australia. 
Uh, sport does that in this country. Sport's just a, a magnificent bridge building exercise to say hello. Even though we have boundary lines like the Murray River and so forth, you know, and, and obviously Bass Strait with Tasmania, it doesn't matter. But the sport in this country connects people. It doesn't matter what code it is, it doesn't matter if it's cricket or, or Olympics. We just love sport. And uh, if we want to send a message through to our uh, 22 million people in the nation, then sport can, can be the conduit to that. And so the Giants are a great op opportunity here for that. And uh, I think most of, the, uh, most of the sports are pretty good. You know, I think that's why we've got a great little nation of 22 million, because we, we connect with um, you know, all the sports. Can you see this as, a, as the beginnings of a specific rivalry with the Suns? I, I, guess I would think so. Yeah, yeah I would think so. Especially because uh, now that we've won the first one, They'll definitely want it to make it a rivalry, I can assure you, because we're going to go back up there yet. And, um, you know, they'll be bruised and their, and their pride will be hurt, obviously, like ours has been the last sort of month and a half. But that's how it starts, you know. Um, you look at St Kilda and um, Footscray and Hawthorne, these last clubs are coming to the AFL. The, the, um, there's pretty ferocious competitiveness against those sorts of teams. And um, I always look at Hawthorne, that 71 grand final, Hawthorne and... Uh, St Kilda, I think it was, yeah, it was a tough, that was a tough grand final. And they come in the, in, in the uh, AFL fairly late, you know. Mm. Is his game uh, is improving still? I think some of the parts of his play are good. I think I'd like to see him take a couple of more marks. But the thing I was really pleased is he competed for the high balls and brought it to the ground for our smaller players so we can contest it in, in the forward line more and make sure we can keep it up there. And that's what we did. And that's what I spoke about to the players when they come in this room. That we actually, you know, with his competitiveness in the air, we don't want them marking. If he can't mark it, then bring it to the ground so our other players can work hard at ground level. And I think that's a very important part of it. And I've been asked a number of times uh, the difference, obviously, between Carmichael Hunt and Izzy Flower. And I say, quite honestly, it's about four years of age because Izzy's only 22. I think Carmichael Hunt's somewhere around about 26. That's a, that's a fair whack. Of, that's about an 80-game, 90-game sporting career. So I think eventually we'll be happy um, as he keeps improving. And I said to him at the end of the game, I said, you keep doing that. Sooner or later, you're going to take probably, um, you know, 70% of the marks and then you'll know which one you can mark and which ones you can push over and flick it out because his hands can be a traffic controller. He can just push the ball out to his teammates running on and uh, when he gets that feel, uh, we'll even get more value out of him. Yeah. Thank you.